This is what 100 Days of Calamity is in a nutshell. Oh! Stop! The adrenaline! Let's go! <coughs> yes! Oh! Does it work? I can't dodge them! Please, let's go! Oh my god! Here it is, 100 Days of Calamity Terraria on Revengeance Mode. This video is insane to make. If you aren't familiar with Calamity, it's a huge mod extension to Terraria. It adds its own lore, bosses, items, and insanely good music. Seriously, like the music is insane. I'm gonna be playing on Revengeance Mode, which makes the bosses way more difficult and adds in more items. It's like a way better master mode. The video does start off slow, but trust me, it gets way more crazier and way more intense, especially when I get into hard mode. Like always, there are timestamps in the description, so you can skip around if you want, but I highly recommend watching from the beginning. So each part is gonna have their own goal, but typically throughout the entire entire playthrough, I'm going to try and fight every single Calamity boss, and at the end, fight the final Calamity boss named Calamitis. But that's not going to be anytime soon. So for this 100 days, my goal by the end is to kill the Calamitis clone, and hopefully I would have enough time and enough preparation to fight that thing, because I've never actually killed it before, and so yeah. If you enjoyed this video, then leave a like, it lets me know that you really did enjoy this video. The mods that I use are in the description. I try to avoid using mods like Louis AFK, which allows infinite potions, infinite arenas, and infinite things, whatever, because I just felt like it was cheating. I use very little mods to try to keep the Calamity experience as genuine as possible, but other than that, enjoy the video. Now this first part covers almost the whole part of pre-hard mode. These bosses are going to look pretty easy, but trust me, in every other part after this, the bosses get way, way harder, and I get way more mad, so stay tuned. So on day one, I joined, and I opened my spawn bag, and I checked my boss list. After checking the boss list, my first plan and goal was to kill the King Slime, and then after that, kill the Desert Scourge. I got loot from a cave, and I made a starter base. Then I crafted myself some Hermes boots, because Calamity adds in some craftable recipes to reduce the RNG, which is pretty nice. On day 2 to 3, I got a lot of things. I went into the desert, I found a pyramid, and I got a sandstorm in a bottle. The first thing I wanted to get was wool from armor. This is a very early on armor set that you can get from wool from enemies that spawn mainly on the surface in early game. I made a sun spirit staff, I made wool from legs, and I began making an arena in the desert. While exploring underground, I got a storm jaw staff. This spawns little storm lions, which are pretty good, and minions early on are going to be really, really helpful. A more rare enemy called the Nidreon spawn, and typically you can't kill it at this point, but since I had these summons, I was able to kill it. I dropped enough materials to craft Victide bars. I used these bars to make a a bow which is really useful and then on day four i actually spawned the king slime as fast as possible and i was careful because there was going to be a new mechanic in this fight because this was revengeance mode and the king slime fight went like a normal king slime fight except there was a point in the fight where his gem comes off his crown and started firing lasers at me but other than that it was pretty easy Oh my gosh, I killed him! Now these are some lore items that you can read in the game which are really really cool, but I'm just gonna read all of them if I can. But yeah, here's King Slimes. Only a fool could be caught by this pitiful excuse for a hunter. Unfortunately, our world has no shortage of those. After killing the King Slime, I made my little cave mining down, and then I got enough materials to make an amethyst hook. Now on day 5, I built more houses, you know, this was a 1.4, so you can just build all your houses in the same area. At this point, I killed enough wolf from enemies to make the full wolf from armor set, and I thought that this would probably be the right time to kill the Desert Scourge. So I went to the Corruption to craft the spawners, and I got a lot of heart crystals, so that was pretty good. But on day six, I was preparing to fight the Desert Scourge. Like, I was actually gonna fight it. Now, if you don't know, the Desert Scourge is a worm based enemy, which is obviously fought in the desert. So, piercing weapons would be really good against this enemy. I don't know if I should read the lore before or after I beat the boss, but let's just say, let's, just, let's say after, actually. Yeah. Also, listen to the music. The music is pretty cool.
yeah, I killed it. You know, I thought it would be harder, but I was able to kill it, you know? It's probably because I played a test run before this, but yeah. I actually spawned it twice, and then I actually had enough materials to make the full Victide armor set. And I made both the summoner set and the ranger set, which is really cool. I mean, look at this armor set. This is awesome. And then let's read the Desert Scourge item lore. So the Desert Scourge, it was a great sea worm, it appears to have survived the extreme heat and has even adapted to it. What used to be a majestic beast swimming through the water has now become a dried up and gluttonous husk constantly on a voracious search for its next meal. Wow. Now, after killing the Desert Scourge, my next destination was the Sunken Sea. This was a sea, a new biome underneath the desert. In this biome, I was gonna be looking for the giant clam mini boss. So I eventually found the Sunken Sea biome and I was walking around looking for the giant clam mini boss and eventually it did spawn. Now, it took me a while to wake it up, but this thing was pretty scary. Like it teleports above you and slams down on you. But other than that, it had pretty simple attack patterns. Eventually later on, it started spawning a lot of enemies, but I had my own minions, you know? So it wasn't, you know, too hard. After killing it, it spawned Amidius, which is a new NPC. At least I think it's Amidius. There's a lot of words that I don't know how to pronounce in this. Now, at this point, I was feeling really confident. You know, this was day six, and I already killed two to three bosses. You know, this is really awesome. So I was feeling really confident. So that night, I summoned the Eye of Cthulhu. And like the new King Slime, there's going to be a new phase that I was, you know, not aware of at all. In Revengeous Mode, it actually goes in Rage at 75% HP. And then when you get it low enough, it actually goes to this new dashing phase, which kind of threw me off in the beginning. But I was able to kill it, and it was awesome. And let's get the lore item. That eye, how peculiar. I sensed it watching you more intensely as you grew stronger. So yeah, as you can see, there's a lot of, you know, lore items and trust me, they get way more interesting, you know, later on. So trust me, we're only just starting, we're at the beginning. On day seven and nine, I began making my magic storage system. This is from the magic storage mod, which basically just makes a very large and central chest system. So you don't have to worry about all the doohicks with, you know, organizing all your stuff. You can also actually make a crafting interface in it. So you can craft your items in it, which is really, really cool. But basically to make this thing, I was going to need a bunch of gems. So after these bosses, the next boss I was after was Crabulon, which is found in the mushroom biome. It looks like a mushroom crab type of thing. I expanded my house and then I went down into my mine and I found the mushroom biome. I went back up to the surface because I had a gravitation potion and I started exploring the sky islands there was a bunch of these sky islands now and they had a lot of heart crystals inside of them so that was really useful since i killed the eye of cthulhu the dryad arrived so i was able to buy pumpkins and plant pumpkins near my house this allowed me to make the pumpkin machine gun which is pretty interesting you know it's a pumpkin machine gun <laughs> i did get a notification that the goblin army was going to come and they were really easy to beat you know it was just plain old goblin army but shortly afterwards i was able to find the goblin tinker in the mushroom biome so that was awesome so on day 10 i bought and i combined accessories and i made my specter boots which is really awesome now this day i was going to fight crabulon and from what i know it jumps a lot and it's used a bunch of spores so i knew that i would need to keep a distance plus i had my pumpkin machine gun so it wasn't going to be that bad right <laughs> also enjoy the music this is awesome music <laughs> And boom, there we go. Able to kill it, you know, pretty nice and dandy. Totally didn't die a few times. All right, let's read the lore item. A crab and its mushrooms, a love story. It's interesting how creatures can adapt given circum circum bleh. It's interesting how creatures can adapt given certain circumstances. Awesome. We only had a few more bosses left in pre hard mode, but now these are, you know, are gonna actually ramp up a bit more in difficulty. So the next bosses were in the corruption. It was the Eater of Worlds and the Hive Mind. The Hive Mind is basically a corruption variant of the Brain of Cthulhu. On day 11 to 12, I actually died a few times trying to summon and kill the Eater of Worlds. It was actually more harder than I thought. No! Fuck. And while doing this, I actually accidentally spawned the hive mind. And it has two phases. One phase, it's stationary and you do damage until it actually floats in the air and starts charging at you. And when I accidentally spawned it, I actually did a good amount of damage. So I thought maybe, you know, maybe I could kill the hive mind before I kill the eater of worlds. So I made this really long platform on the surface on the snow biome, which is also my corruption biome, which kind of sucks, but it's whatever. And I challenged it. And of course I got all my potions and everything like that. And I prepared to fight and here's the fight.
regarder. Yes Oh. And I was actually shocked that I killed it. You know, I tr I fought it a few times before. I got it really low, but I didn't actually kill it. But this time I, you know, finally killed it. Let's read the lore item. A hive of clustered microbial infected flesh. I do not believe killing it will lessen the corruption here. Awesome. At this point, I finally had enough shadow diamonds and gems and all that stuff. And I finally made a working magic storage system. So this thing was going to be my base. Now, after you kill the hive mine, you're able to mine aerialite ore as given by the subtext in the bottom left. Aerialite ore could be used to make basically aerialite armor, which is sky, you know, hard based armor so this is gonna be really cool so on day 13 and 14 i went to the sky and i built this platform to try and get arrow spec gear i was gonna need feathers and aerialite ore so i went to the sky to farm feathers and i went to my mine to mine aerialite and after spending some time i made the gale force bow and i made the full arrow spec armor sets for both the ranger and the summoner and then on day 15 i went to the corruption to fight the eater of worlds again and guess what i was able to kill it it's just like any other like, eater of worlds fight but this one has fire and more heads and things like that you you'll see what I'm talking about but yeah I was able to kill it so that was awesome let's read the lore item perhaps it was just a giant worm infected by the microbe given centuries to feed and grow its festering body seems likely given the origins of this place bear with me we're almost done pre-hard mode uh just technically one more boss and then the wall of flesh but this one is gonna be a bit more difficult so on day 16 to day 18 I was gonna get a lot of wood because I was gonna make a very long platform I was gonna get ready to fight a god the slime god now this boss is quote unquote infamous for being really annoying in pre-hard mode, but basically the tip that people have is to make a very long platform. So that's what, exactly what I was going to do. And like I mentioned earlier, you can craft a lot of the accessories. So I was going to make a bundle of balloons. I was going to need clouds, feathers, snow, and that was pretty much it. And I was able to craft the balloons, the cloud in the bottle, the snowstorm in a bottle, or is it the blizzard in the bottle? I don't remember. But I combined all of that and I made the bundle of balloons. So that was awesome. On day 19, I reforged my gear. I was going to get ready to fight and kill a god. I'm going to put all my attempts or my failed attempts afterwards but trust me there was a lot of attempts there was many close attempts basically the slime god is made of three parts its core the crimson slime and the corruption slime and it flies around a lot but finally when it was a blood moon and when it was raining i fought the slime god one more time After killing the slime god, you know, I was pretty shocked. I didn't think I'd be able to kill it, you know, as fast as I did. You know, let's read the lore item. It is a travesty, one of the most threatening biological terrors ever created. If this creature were allowed to combine every slime on the planet, it would become nearly unstoppable. Wow, that's so scary. But yeah, that was most of the pre hard mode bosses, you know, not Queen Bee, not Skeletron, not Wall of Flesh, but we'll get to that. And the next part is where things will get very, very, very annoying. No! Oh, oh! No, stop! Leave me alone! No! Oh! So now basically most of the pre-hard mode bosses were killed. I killed all of the calamity, you know, new bosses, and I thought it was time to go into hard mode. I was pretty confident, you know, most of these pre-hard mode bosses weren't so bad. So I thought this was gonna be easy, very easy. And I was very wrong, very wrong. On day 20 to 21, I was gonna make Statagel armor because after killing the slime god, I got enough materials to make its own armor set. And I was gonna need Hellstone for this new armor set. I began working on my elevator and I mined a lot of Hellstone and I was getting obsidian. And I also crafted a lava charm because accessories are craftable. And I also got more Hellstone after that. On day 22 to day 23, I killed the slime 
slime god again and i saw this bow recipe for the lunarian bow and it needed a bow from the queen bee and i wanted this bow so i went to the jungle and i killed the queen bee you know if anything the queen bee was just more aggressive but other than that it was pretty easy to kill so i'm not gonna you know show the fight because nothing really interesting happened in the fight here's the lore item where is the lore item here it is as crude as the giant insects are they can prove useful in certain situations given the ability to control them Wow! After that, I made the Molten Bow, I made the Demonic Bow, and then with all of those, I went to a Demon Altar and I crafted the Lunarian Bow. And this thing was pretty cool. It shot like lasers or something like that. And if you shot like a wall, it would actually bounce off. And you know, I thought this was pretty cool. So I thought at this point, you know, might as well kill most of the bosses on this list. So I went to the dungeon, which is, you know, far as heck. And I went at night, I summoned Skeletron. And honestly, Skeletron wasn't so bad. You know, maybe I'm just, you know, actually getting, you know, somewhat good at this game, but it actually wasn't so bad. Where is the lore item? Here it is. The curse is said to only affect the elderly. After they are afflicted, they become an immortal vessel for an ancient demon of the underworld. So on day 24, I spent this day exploring the dungeon. I got an alchemy table and I went back home and I made lightning boots and then I made frost bark boots after crafting ice skates. Cause like I said, you can craft a lot of accessories. This was pretty cool. So then on day 25, I started making my hell platform. And now this finally starts the frustration of revenge mode on playing calamity mode. I cannot for the life of me kill the wall of flesh. On day 26, I was building my hell platform even longer and so many enemies kept spawning. I don't know why, but they just boosted the spawn rates or something like that. I made a ton more houses and then on day 27, I started working on my magic storage a bit more. I thought that maybe a mount would help, so I went to the snow biome and I decided to look for the snow temple. Now, Calamity adds these pre-hard mode temples with, you know, pretty cool biome loot and I wanted the snow one. And eventually, I actually found it and inside this thing was a tundra dog mount. Whoa, what is that? Is this it? Is this it? Is this it? Let's go! I got it! Oh my gosh! Now, it wasn't as good as I thought, but it was, you know, still pretty cool. It didn't make me go fast, but it was whatever. On day 28, I decided to go to the dungeon to get a shadow key and a shield. Eventually, I did get both of them, but you're probably asking, like, why do you need a shadow key, Adrian? You know, like, why? Basically, on the rightmost part of my map, there is a new biome called the Sulfurous Sea, and underneath the Sulfurous Sea is the Abyss. Now, in here, there was going to be shadow chests with some pretty good loot. I made a journey for the Abyss, and I got some loot, but it's really hard to see there, and it's pretty scary, I'm not going to lie. On day 29, I died a lot to the Wall of Flesh, and I struggled a lot. I died so much. I wasted a lot of potions, and honestly, this day was when I was feeling really defeated. You know, 29 days, and finally, I was feeling the pain. The real pain of playing on Terraria Calamity or Revengeance. It was kind of bad. Dude, 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 I literally can't dodge anything. DUDE! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh! Oh, you piece of shit. I could not imagine death mode. The things that they changed in revenge mode is that you can't run away towards it. It starts running really quickly and it catches up to you. It also shoots lasers with different speeds and lasers in the second phase actually like are way more like potent and they like set you on fire and stuff like that. It's insane. On day 30, I decided to continue on building my hell platform. You know, maybe I just thought that, you know, if I can make a longer platform, I'd be way better. I even drank a builder potion and I even drank a Zen potion, which reduces spawn rates. It was at this moment I also crafted Hellfire Arrows because they do a lot more damage, but still, I just kept dying. And like, oh my gosh. Dude, I'm, I'm stuck! I'm dead. What the fuck? Why can't I drink it? Why can't I drink it? Why can't I drink it? Why can't. On day 31 and day 34, I was so frustrated. I just. I couldn't kill this thing. Like, I didn't know what I could do. I changed loadouts. I changed my arena. I had so many voodoo dolls that I could keep trying for th three days straight. But still, after all that, I, I still couldn't kill it. I just couldn't kill it at all. Oh my god. Uh, uh. What? It doesn't work! I hate this game so much. Literally, you can't dodge them! Oh my god, bro! That's 50 damage! How on earth do you dodge this bush what am i stuck on i'm gonna burn to death i'm gonna burn to death oh my god until i decided to actually prepare like it was the first time i was fighting it again and i drank all of the potions i need and i prepared so much and i fought it again and this was when my in real life adrenaline started kicking in
What the fuck? On day 35, I killed the Wall of Flesh, and we are finally in Calamity Hard Mode. Things are going to get serious. I see the deed is done. The unholy amalgamation of flesh and hatred has been defeated. Prepare to face the terrors that lurk in the light and dark parts of this world. After realizing how difficult the Wall of Flesh was, it actually made me wonder about the difficulty spike when I would actually fight the Calamitous clone, and I was getting worried for the entire playthrough now. Things weren't so bad after hard mode, initially. The first boss in hard mode was Cryogen, which was an ancient ice boss that looks like a snowflake. So on day 35 to day 37, I started building a minecart track, you know, finally invest in an actual, you know, transportation method. I also spent this day getting all of the hard mode ores, you know how it goes, you know, going from cobalt, mithril, titanium, whatever, right? That's what I did. And the first thing I crafted was a titanium rail gun. I also found Arctic diving gear in an arsenal lab in the snow biome, which is kind of cool, but it was kind of whatever. So on day 38 to day 39, I was getting corrupted sand and I spread corrupted sand underground because I needed to get souls of night. After going home, I crafted some cryogen spawners and I decided to try it out and surprise, surprise, I died. Dude, what the f*** is going on? At this point, I realized that I was very unprepared. So the goals that I had in mind were to upgrade my armor to titanium and then craft a rod of discord. You can craft rod of discord, you know, but it's not going to be easy. On day 40, I spent this whole day just getting titanium and I actually made the full set of titanium armor. So that was the easy part. Now this is the hard part. From day 41 to day 45, I was going to spend this day grinding to get the rod of discord. Now, it's not as bad as the vanilla grind because you can actually craft it this time, but the, the crafting is still not easy. You're going to need 30 souls of life, five chaos fish, and 50 pixie dust, which is a lot of grinding. I was farming the souls of light, which took about like two to three hours in real life. It was AFK farming, but I got all of them. And then I began farming the pixie dust and while farming the pixie dust, I actually got a unicorn mount and I got a nimbus rod. So that was pretty cool. Now on day 46 to day 48, I was fishing for the chaos fish and this thing would just not come out of the water. I decided to farm the desert scourge to get angler accessories because it drops fish items and stuff like that. And eventually I made the supreme bait tackle box fishing station. Yeah, that's a mouthful, but it was really good and helped me. And and it took a really long time to get all of the chaos fish, but I got all of them. <gasps> I got it. Let's go. I got all of it. And after getting all of them, I crafted the Rod of Discord. So on day 49, I got ready. I put on all my new armor, I put the Rod of Discord in my hotbar, and I made all of my potions, including a warmth potion, because Cryogen inflicts all of these debuffs on you, which are so annoying. But now I was going to get ready and fight the first hard mode boss of Calamity. <laughs> Bing bada boom, we killed it. And there we go. We killed it. After killing it, the Archmage NPC spawns, and you can buy some really cool things that I just didn't buy because I was stupid. But yeah, let's read the lore item. The Archmage's prison. I am unsure if it has grown weaker over the decades of imprisonment. Interesting. Wow, so cool. 
So it was time to kill the mechanical bosses, and, and also during this time I would try and fight the Aquatic Scourge. So on day 50 I went to the Sulfurous Sea. Now the Aquatic Scourge is the cousin to the Desert Scourge, a more hydrated and a more mutated version. And I summoned it and I died. Yeah, the hard mode was pretty hard. <laughs> so I kind of let that boss alone and I thought that the first boss to kill was the Destroyer. Now on day 51, I did, you know, obviously I got the Daedalus Stormbow, I reforged it, I got the Unreal Prefix and I made Holy Arrows, right? <laughs> and the, the only real changes that I noticed that was, you know, really evident from the Destroyer fight was that there was just a bunch more lasers, like a lot. And if the Destroyer itself touches you, you take a bunch of damage. But on day 51, I fought the Destroyer and I killed it. Now there's actually two lore items, so we have the mechanical bosses. I see you have awakened Drayden's old toys. Once useful tools turned into savage beasts when their AIs went rogue. A mistake that Drayden failed to rectify in time. I'm assuming you pronounce it as Drayden, right? Drayden, Raiden, I don't know. A machine brought to life by the mighty souls of warriors and built to excavate massive tunnels and planets to gather resources. Could have been proven useful if Drayden didn't have an obsession with turning everything into a tool of destruction. After killing the destroyer on day 52 to day 53, I continued expanding my minecart rail thing, yeah. Now my next goal was to kill the twins and oh, would this give me so much misery. On day 54 to day 55, I died to the twins. These things had more HP and also you couldn't talk target just one twin. If you try to target one, their HP wouldn't go down anymore, so you have to get both of them into their enraged state. And not only that, they were more aggressive and they did way more damage. I also realized that I could upgrade my counter scarf, so I did, and I made the evasion scarf, but it didn't help me with the twins battle, so. Oh my god, bro, they just don't die! I decided to look for a solution, you know, maybe I could kill the Aquatic Scourge and get better weapons. So on day 56, on day 57, I went to the Aquatic Scourge and I, I tried to fight it, but I died, so that was kind of bad. Why am I still taking damage? What the fuck? Things weren't looking so great, you know, I was getting frustrated. Uh, things are getting really bad now. This started worrying me. I was getting stuck on this boss when I had to kill the Calamitis Clan before the end of the 100 days. And honestly, this was stressing me out. But in the moment of, you know, doubt, I was able to fight and kill the Aquatic Scourge. A horror born of pollution and insatiable hunger. Based on size alone, this was merely a juvenile. These scourge creatures are the largest aquatic predators, and very rarely do they frequent such shallow waters. Interesting. So on day 58, I was grinding the desert scourge for some money. I reforged and I got the unreal railgun. So yeah. After a second grind of the Desert Scourge, after selling everything, I died. And for some reason, I accidentally reset my spawn, so I lost all of my money. So that was a waste of time, but whatever. On day 59 to day 60, I made the Charm of Myths, which is something that you can keep in mind for the future. And this is the day where I also summoned the twins. And just watch from this fight, just see how much more aggressive they are.
And yeah, like you can judge by my reaction. I was really surprised. It was actually 12 midnight in real life, so I couldn't be too loud, but I was really shocked that I did it. I was, holy crap, I did it. The Biomechanical Watchers of the Night, originally created as security using the souls extracted from human eyes. These creatures did not belong in this world. It's best to be rid of them. Now, Skeletron Prime was afterwards, obviously, the last of the mechanical bosses. So on day 61, I summoned it, and I didn't kill it, but I didn't die. It actually left, but it wasn't so bad. But I was pretty sure that, you know, I could actually kill it soon. But later that night, I was going to summon it again. And the only changes that I really noticed was that you couldn't damage the, you know, the head until you killed all of the arms. But other than that, I think this was going to be a light fight. What a silly and pointless contraption for something created with the essence of pure terror. Drayden obviously took several liberties with its design, and I am not impressed. <laughs> Interesting. Now also after killing everything, I had every single soul, so I was able to craft the angel treads, which are basically the terror spark boots, but for calamity, you know, these were first, but yeah, I got these and I was able to run pretty fast. And I was pretty, you know, I was pretty happy. I killed all the mechanical bosses. This was awesome, but oh gosh. It's gonna get harder. <laughs> so after killing the mechanical bosses, there was one more boss before Plantera, or what I wanted to do. It was a boss down in hell, the Brimstone Elemental. I went down to hell and I found the Brimstone Crag Biome, and I made spawners. Now, let's actually read the lore before actually fighting this boss, because I think the lore is really interesting. So there's actually a paragraph, and I don't really want to read it, but um, basically there were five sisters, each taking an elemental. After Calamitus laid waste to the civilization at the core of the planet, all that was left of the underworld was a foul, blackened monument. That elemental was no match for Calamitus, and barely clinging to life after the massacre, what had been once a goddess was reduced to a mere beast fighting for survival. Her few remaining followers lost in a human's seemingly pointless slaughter. The Brimstone Elemental swore that humanity would be her enemy until the end of time. Trivia, Brimstone Elemental was formerly referred into the mod files as Brimstone Waifu. <laughs> Very interesting. And yeah, yeah it, it's a pretty interesting boss. So on day 63 to day 64, I went down to the Brimstone Crag Biome with the spawners, and I died a lot. Like a lot, a lot. Oh! What the fuck? Honestly, I did not know how I was going to kill this boss. This was the boss that actually made me the most mad, and you're going to see that in the next part as well. On day 65, I made the Twin Staff, and I also made the Sun God Staff, because I wanted to play around with my Summoner Kit. I was farming Souls of Night to make more Brimstone Elementals, and I thought that now I would need an upgrade, because I died literally so many times. So I was going to make the Deific Arm- The Deific? Deific Amulet. And basically, it's an upgraded Star Veil. I was going to need the Star Cloak, and while farming for it, I actually called it, and I got it. Oh! You know, that was awesome. And I had mostly everything, I just needed a jellyfish necklace, which I actually threw out earlier in my gameplay. So on day 66 to day 67, I spent this entire two days getting the jellyfish necklace. I was farming and I was farming, but I finally got it. And I went home and I made this amulet. So on day 68, I actually expanded the arena and I made everything more wider and larger. And I thought that I actually had a proper loadout this time. And I challenged and I fought the Brimstone Elemental. <laughs>
Yes! The most powerful of the elementals, bent on exacting revenge upon the bloody inferno that demolished her home, finally put to rest she will no longer suffer from the guilt caused by the deaths of her people. Now usually you're supposed to fight Plantera after the Calamitis clone, but I don't care. So now the goal was to kill Plantera, but also get the summon item from the Brimstone Elemental, which allows you to summon these things called Brim Seekers, which are really cool and I really wanted that. So there was two goals for this part. So on day 69, I killed the Brimstone Elemental and it didn't give the item that I wanted, so I wanted to grind it. On day 70, I killed it again, and while fighting it, the Queen Bee randomly what? spawned like twice, and I died to the Brimstone Elemental so many times. Another one? Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking die! You piece of sh B, why the fuck are you here? I keep getting the same shit, dude. <laughs> and even though I killed it before, I just kept dying so much. I, I died so much of the Brimstone Elemental. So on day 71 to day 72, I got frustrated and I went to the jungle. I expanded my minecart trail all the way to the jungle and I started blowing things up to make an arena. I also bought a cryogenic staff from the Permafrost NPC for basically a cryogen century, which I should have bought way earlier on, but I didn't because I'm stupid, but whatever. On day 73, I was gonna fight the Brimstone again and again and again, but I kept dying and dying and dying. What? Can I teleport? Please, man! No! On day 74 to day 75, I got so frustrated that I went to the jungle again, and I started building my arena for Plantera. On this day, a solar eclipse also happened, so I went home and I killed some enemies, and I didn't really get anything useful, so whatever. I continued building my arena, and I tried to fight Plantera a few times, but oh man. At this moment in time, I also decided to make Daedalus armor. Now, you can actually craft it way earlier on. I think you can craft it after Cryogen, but I didn't because I didn't know it existed. Remember, I, just, like, I, I don't know all these things. You know? I don't know everything yet, because you know I just don't know all these new armor sets and stuff but it looks really cool daedalus armor and on day 76 to day 77 i killed the brimstone elemental with the first try of this armor so i thought that i you know i should use this armor more and i killed it a few times and i died to it a lot of times but it still didn't drop the summon item that i wanted i also went to the jungle and i died a lot a lot yeah i was pretty frustrated I didn't want to spend too much time on the Brimstone Elemental because I had to kill the Calamitis clone, but honestly, I really wanted this summon item, and this would make me worried for the rest of the playthrough, because if I couldn't kill this Calamitis clone before the 100 days, then what is the whole point of this video? On day 78, I expanded my arena even more, and I decided to make a new weapon, the Chlorophyte Shot Bow. Now, despite dying again, I actually thought that, you know, I could just keep fighting Plantera and just, you know, just keep training myself. And on day 79, I did exactly that. You know, I was going to just spawn Plantera and just fight it, right? Not Nothing, nothing crazy, you know, just try and fight it. If I die, I die. But something crazy happened in this fight, and I don't know what, but this fight was insane. On day 79, I killed Plantera. I, I don't know how. I don't know. Maybe I just dodged a lot, but whatever. Here's the lore item. Well done. You killed a plant. It was used as a vessel to house the spirits of those unfortunate enough find their way down here. I wish you luck in dealing with the fallout.
Now I'm assuming you pronounce it as Calamitis, but I left enough time to prepare and fight this boss, specifically the Calamitis clone. Supreme Calamitis was going to be at the end of this entire playthrough, it was the final boss of Calamity. But I thought that you know it would be a good benchmark to kill the Calamitis clone right now, right before the 100 days ended, finish it off like that. You're typically supposed to fight her before Plantera, but like I said, I didn't care. But this was the goal of the entire playthrough, and I left myself 20 days, and hopefully I could kill it by the end of the 20 days. But a surprise actually came along the way. On day 80, I was getting Perennial Ore, which is the ore that spawns after you kill Plantera. I drank a Zerg potion to drag up the spawn rates to get more Perennial Ore, and after that, I got enough ore, and I made the full Reaver armor set. This set looked awesome. On day 81, I actually got the Ancient Relic from the Brimstone Elemental that actually spawns her herself, and this is going to be very important later on. On day 82, I was getting ready to go to the Abyss, and I went to the Abyss, and I got really scared, and then there was this thing that was really crazy, but whatever. But after fighting the Brimstone Elemental so many times, I finally got the summon that I want. Oh, I got it! Oh! This thing can summon Brim Seekers, and if you summon an extra one, it shoots out this like ring of lasers and things, and it was awesome. I wanted this thing so badly. Now here is when the surprise comes in. On day 83, in the afternoon, I was going to summon Calamitis to see what it was like and try it out. I prepared like it was a regular fight, and I was going to get ready and see, you know, maybe if I could, you know, how much damage I could do onto it. And this is what happened. indeed stronger than I thought, though the bloody inferno still lingers, observing your progress. Yeah, 
on day 84 i killed it first try i did not expect that at all i died to the br i didn't I, I don't i did not expect that at all i died to the brimstone elemental like so many times but i killed the calamitis clone first try i mean it does make sense that i had the reaver armor but still so yeah there we go i i got my goal right i guess that's good that should be good right and so yeah you know it's awesome that you complete your goal early on but now what was i supposed to do and oh my gosh there's a lot to do so I wanted to craft the Heart of Elementals because I was ahead of the schedule. It basically combines all of the ancient relics and summons all of the elementals. And I already had one. I had the Brimstone Elemental Ancient Relic. There's also an Ancient Relic from Cryogen. So I went there and I killed it and I got it. Now I was going to farm for the Desert Elementals. So I went into the desert and I sat in there and I summoned a Sandstorm. And after a while, I got one of the Desert Summons and a lot of enemies spawned. I killed a lot of Desert Elementals. And then eventually a mini boss actually spawned, the Great Sand Shark. And it dropped enough materials to make the apex swan so on day 85 to day 86 i made the apex swan which is really cool but then i upgraded it to the sand sharknado staff which is actually really really good but it doesn't look as cool as the one before i spent these days farming for the desert elementals and finally i got both of the summons for the sand elementals i also made the cell phone on this day which was awesome and like i said i was kind of bored i didn't know what to do on day 87 i did some of the pumpkin moon but i didn't really finish it on day 88 to day 89 i decided to go and find the lizard temple and i eventually found it and i made an arena and and I was able to kill the golem first try. I unleashed the plague onto the jungle. Now this is when lore gets way more interesting and all the bosses are going to get crazier. Holy crap. Because since I was able to finish my goal way more earlier, I was going to see the terrors and the hardships that I would have to go through for the next episode. So on day 90, I actually killed the Calamitis clone again and I got the summon and I was able to spawn mini Calamity twins and trios and stuff like that. It was really cool. I tested it out against King Slime and it melted it completely. There's also on this day, I triggered the Martian invasion and this thing was so annoying. On day 91 to day 92, I just died so much. They were so annoying. Dude, like this piece of shit right here, man. Shut. Oh, I literally can't. Dude, dude. Mm, no. The saucer was ridiculous, so I did the most logical thing possible, and I dug underground. And after killing all the Martians, I started working on a teleporter all the way to the ocean, and I finished it in the same exact day. So on day 93, I went into the jungle to find a staff of regrowth, and this is when I ran into the plague. I got jumped by Plague Bringer. Now from what I know in the lore, basically the plague was released in the- and it actually affected the Queen Bee, and that's why the Plague Bringer looks very similar to the Queen Bee. So on day 94, I wanted to see the next bosses that I would have to kill. And this is what happened. How in the mother do you kill this boss? On day 95, I was going to make a trip to the abyss. There was this... I died to the Eidolon Worm a lot of times, but I got a lot of abyss things. There was a lot of drops that I didn't know that you can get from the abyss. And I was able to upgrade my gear, but I still died to the... Uh, the idol on worm a lot i was able to get the abyssal diving gear and i decided to go back to the abyss and get scoria ore because i found out that scoria ore was actually the fire thing that was killing me a while ago and after getting enough scoria bars i was able to make hydrothermic armor on day 97 i made the hado mantle which are new wing and the hydrothermic armor looks cooler than the reaver armor in my opinion but i didn't know which one was actually better so on day 98 i went to the ocean to go see anahita and the leviathan and I died so much to Anahita. And it's just the first phase. I went to the Ashram Aureus and it killed me so many times. And I was just so weak, just terrible. And I was completely lost. On day 99, I went down the farm and I started farming the Eater of Worlds to get money. But other than that, on day 100, I was just walking around. I, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I said no chance against Anahita, no chance against Ashram Aureus. There was just, so many things and killing the calamitis clone early on just made me lost and i don't know what i could do and we're only halfway there there's going to be so many more bosses in the future that i would have to kill gods all of these things are going to come up in the future so many obstacles and honestly i didn't know if i could do it